Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Dr. Oya Dursun Öskanca. I'm the interim director of the honors program at Elizabethtown College. And today we are delighted to have uh, Miss uh, Elizabeth Lepore uh, giving us her study abroad presentation to us uh, based on her experiences in East Sussex. So without further ado, uh, let me give the floor to you, Elizabeth. Okay, uh, hello everyone. My name is Elizabeth. I am a junior engineering student here at E-Town. Um, I do have a PowerPoint prepared uh, for my presentation. Am I able to share screen for that? Yes, you are. Okay, can you see that? Perfect. Yes. Okay, so... Um, like Dr. Estanza said, I had a study abroad experience in East Sussex, England um, last spring in 2020. Let me actually play this. So my departure date for um, going abroad was January 2nd, 2020. So that was much earlier than the spring semester at in town so i didn't have too much time um to be at home to like prepare and pack everything and uh, furthermore this was my first time ever traveling alone much less um going across the atlantic ocean and my parents really didn't have any travel experience either so this was just a new experience for all of us um, my flight took about 10 to 11 hours. Um, I had a lay going from um, Baltimore to Montreal, and then I arrived in London Heathrow Airport the next day. And um, that was actually the day where I ended up meeting a lot of my future close friends, but I didn't know that at the time. And um, when I first got there, I was kind of worried about like not really knowing anyone especially since I found out that a lot of students already kind of knew each other. But um, upper year orientation really changed that. We had some travels through um, Eastbourne and Brighton, which are some like local towns and cities in East Sussex, just to kind of familiarize the upper year students with what's in the area. Because there were also um, first year students that were um, in my same program but their study abroad program is for the full year. So when they were coming back, they kind of already knew the ropes, whereas like me and the other upper year students were like pretty new the, to this. So I took classes in Hurstmansu Castle, which is pictured um, on the slide here. Um, it was built in the 15th century and parts of the castle are like still original. So a lot of the like exterior is like original from when it was built like hundreds of years ago. But in a lot of the interior, it was converted to be like a modern classroom. Though funny enough, in one of the um, classrooms, there's actually a um, trap door that's like sealed now, but it's to a like dungeon below in the castle. So like learning stuff like that about a castle that I'm taking classes in is like really interesting. And also in the picture has a moat which I just thought was like the coolest thing. But I didn't actually um, live in the castle. I lived in a regular residence hall that was about a 10 minute walk from the castle. So for my classes, I took um, five classes when I was abroad. I took astronomy, geology, mobile communications, which is like a film class, macroeconomics and global health. There were like, a whole list of classes offered, but these were just the five that I took because they fulfilled several of my core requirements that I still needed at E-Town. And I had a very small cohort and class sizes. Like if you thought that E-Town was small, like this was even smaller. So um, pictured here is nearly all of the upper year students. There are a few missing, but there was only about 20 of us. And for my class sizes, my smallest class was seven people and my largest class was around 25. So that was like one of the reasons that I um, was really drawn to this program was because of the small class sizes since I was already used to that at E-Town and that was also like a big reason why I chose to come to E-Town uh, in the first place. 
So something that really stood out about um, the BISC program um, in relation to some of the other study abroad programs that I looked at were the experiential learning opportunities or ELOs. And these are basically um, field trips for all of my classes to like witness and apply course material outside of the classroom. And here are some examples of the ELOs that I went on. So for my macroeconomics class, we went to the um, Bank of England for the day. Um, for my astronomy class, we went to the Science Museum in London, which is pictured here. And then for my um, film class, we went to um, this film like cinema museum in Paris. So my program is in East Sussex, East Sussex England, which um, on the map in the corner, it's highlighted in red. So it was like right on the coast and it was about a two-ish hour drive from London. And I was in a very rural location. However, there were um, shuttle services that had like bus trips going off of campus throughout the day. And they went to like local cities and, town, um, and towns like Eastbourne, Rye, Brighton, and Lewis. And there were also some very local trips to um, a town called Hailsham, which was only like a 10 minute drive from the castle. And that was where um, there was an Asda there, which is kind of like Walmart in England and also some places to eat. So if you just wanted to like um, have a quick trip off campus that was also available. And the pictures here, um, the picture in the center that is from Eastbourne. So there was like a rocky beach and a pier there. I wish the day wasn't so overcast because it was actually very beautiful. And um, in the corner, um, the picture that is from Brighton. And also um, in late January, myself and a friend went on a day trip to Canterbury. And I have some images that I took during that trip. So um, these two pictures are from the interior of the Canterbury Cathedral, which these pictures really don't do it justice with how intricate and beautiful it was. Like it was such an amazing experience to actually go in there and look at the, um, the history of that place. It was amazing. And I was actually kind of surprised with how many of these cathedrals are in England and all over Europe, but Canterbury definitely stood out as like my favorite one. And this is just part of the um, exterior of the cathedral, which I wish that I could capture the full scope of how immense that place is. Like this one picture really doesn't do it justice. So um, for my program, it included a four day trip to Paris during the midterm break, which is kind of like a spring break, but it was in the middle of February, so not really during spring. So the program covered um, housing and transportation to Paris, but um, it was up to the students to cover costs like food and like travel within the city. And for the rest of the week, students also um, didn't have any classes. So we were encouraged to like do some more traveling around Europe. So me and a smaller group of friends um, after Paris, we went to Brussels in Belgium and then Dublin, Ireland. And these two pictures here are when me and a larger group of friends went to Versailles for the day. So we went to the palace and um, the picture to the left is this like painting on the ceiling, which was like in every single room in the palace. And it was so just detailed and beautiful. And every single room that I went into, it was more just like ornate and intricate. And I kept on thinking to myself that I couldn't believe I was here, like seeing all of this, even though we did need to wait about an hour, hour and a half to actually get into the palace. Cause I guess we just chose the worst day to take a day trip there, but it was still really fun. So here are some uh, other pictures in Paris. Um, the one to the left was um, a picture from the view at the top of the Arc de Triomphe, which um, this picture is like a bit smaller, but um, if, you, if you were on the um, roof of the monument, there's like 10 or 12 different roads that all converge there. 
So it was really like, it really is an amazing view. And center picture, of course, Eiffel Tower had to see it too bad because of construction, I couldn't go underneath of it. And then to the right is a picture of the Sacre Coeur. And then here are some pictures in Brussels in Belgium. The one to the left is myself and the group of friends I was traveling with in front, um, in front of the um, central square of the city. Um, the, center, the center picture is just a really beautiful um, picture of just a street in a more touristy area. And then to the right, we just randomly found this like giant Ferris wheel just in the city. We weren't able to like actually ride it, but it was just cool that even when we were just off exploring, we can see some like really beautiful things in these countries. And then here um, in Dublin, Ireland, um, here is me in front of um, Dublin Castle that me and my friends actually got to go into. And then to the right is a picture in St. Patrick's Cathedral. So I found out when I first um, arrived in England that I was gonna be the only American upper year student, the only sophomore student and the only E-Town student. So I was really worried about being kind of the odd person out. And the reason that I was like one of the few Americans is because the program is through Queen's University in Kingston in Canada. So all of my friends were Canadian. However, I end up feeling really welcomed by everyone, especially by my roommate Carmen, who was a um, senior health studies major who was like applying to grad school. So she was kind of like a friend and a mentor figure for me because she had already been through most of college and was just having a like study abroad term to round out all of her like hard work through her four years. And also um, I had a lot of anxiety about like barely having any travel experience and she was very well traveled. So she really helped me with like planning trips and kind of knowing um, what to do when you are like traveling in a foreign country which was just so helpful and by the end of the semester I felt much more confident about like navigating and like scheduling and planning trips. So something that I learned when I was abroad was that kind of in general Americans aren't super well liked in other countries and I'm not saying that to discourage anyone from going abroad. It was just something that I wish I knew before going abroad. And I always like to tell the story about um, this British cashier woman in a little cafe on campus. So this was the last day that I was abroad before my flight scheduled home, which I will get into with everything that happened with COVID-19. And myself and some friends were taking pictures in the gardens and like by the castle. And we stopped at this little cafe to just take a break and eat and see how the pictures turned out. And I, would, and, I and a friend were talking with the cashier and she was asking us about, um, oh, like when are you leaving? You know, how are, like, how are your flights gonna be? And I said, oh, I'm gonna be traveling back to um, DC tomorrow. And she said, oh, you're American. And I'm like, yeah, I am. And she said, oh, but you're so wholesome, which I didn't really know how to respond to that. So I just like laughed awkwardly and went to sit back down. So a lot of times I was kind of seen as being like the exception to American stereotypes, even with my like Canadian friends, because they didn't see me as being like loud and obnoxious or anything like that. But I really hope that I kind of changed that perception a bit. Though based on how um, sometimes me and my friends encountered American travelers when we were um, like in Brussels or in Dublin, I kind of see why Americans had that reputation. So what I would do over about my semester, I don't want to say regret, because that sounds very negative. And like, I really did not have a negative experience at all. But what I wish I did was I wish that I went to more 
places while I was abroad. Because I did have some free weekends that I decided to just stay at the castle. And a lot of that was because I was very concerned about academics. And I'm not saying, you know, don't be concerned about your classes. Please do that. But it got to the point where I was so worried about like homework and assignments and everything like that, that that was holding me back from having like more experiences while I was abroad. So it was kind of just striking that balance between having, you know, a healthy like concern about your workload and also living it up when you're abroad. And something else that I would really do over is um, I didn't have enough closure due to how the semester ended, which I will be getting into about COVID. But um, several of my friends basically left overnight because their parents wanted them on like the soonest flights back to Canada. So I wasn't able to like say goodbye to them face to face, which I really like wanted to do. So looking back, I would be a bit more proactive with actually going to see my friends before they leave. And kind of connecting to that, I really wish that I was able to connect with other people who went abroad, like as soon as I like, got home. Because over the summer, I really wasn't able to reflect with another person about my experiences abroad because I would talk to my like friends and family about it, but they didn't have that same experience. So it was like, I couldn't really process everything that happened. I, w I really wasn't able to until um, I was talking with another E-Town student who went abroad um, the next semester. And we really just talked about everything that happened, especially with trying to get home um, after the pandemic. And lastly, I really wanted to learn more about um, English history and politics, just to have a better um, foundation of like a lot of the political situations going on in England at the time, especially with Brexit. Um, I had no idea just how intense the debates about Brexit were until I was actually there. Because during um, upper year orientation, the community fellows were telling the upper years, hey, do not mention Brexit to any of the British locals because they will like start talking about it and there could be like arguments that could be very uncomfortable. And um, the picture here is actually, um, one of my friends set up a like a Brexit watch party um, the day that like Brexit officially happened. So like she had her laptop set up and we watched it. And actually during the um like during the event, there was footage of like people protesting it. So like that's how like intense it was. So finally the um COVID-19 pandemic. Um if I had to describe what happened with the pandemic to someone who um well into the future has like no experience with actually going through it, I would say that it happened slowly and then all at once. Because what happened was that um, there was a lot of discussion about the coronavirus in my global health course in January, but it was discussed as something that was just going on in China, that it wasn't really something that affected any of us in England or any of our families in Canada or the United States. But then in early March was when it really started to like spread rapidly, especially in European countries like Italy. And that was when some people were kind of considering like, oh, what's gonna happen with this? Should we, are we gonna be sent home? Like what's going on? And then Wednesday, March 11th was when the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 as a pandemic. And that was when the panic ensued um, this was when some of my friends were on flights the next day to leave. And there was just a lot of uncertainty about um, what was happening with the program, if we were going to be able to stay abroad or not. But then Friday, March 13th was when um, the town and the study abroad office sent the email out to all of the 
current students abroad, um, telling everyone to come back home as soon as you can. And that was when I got a flight scheduled for Wednesday, March 18th. That was when I was able to say goodbye to my friends that were still there. And trying to get home was definitely an experience. Um, I found out the Monday before I was supposed to leave that one of my flights got canceled without notifying me. But somehow my instincts just told me to go to Air Canada's website and check um, your flight status. And I'm so happy I did that because my mom and I were able to uh, schedule another flight for me to get from Toronto back home to Maryland. And something else that I really hope that the history books in the future um, really emphasize is how kind airport employees are with the panic and the stress of everyone trying to get home and there's borders closing and there's flights being canceled. Everyone that I talked to in that, like in airports were so kind and understanding and really helped me with like checking my bags and making sure that I had my flight information correct. And when I was having when I was going through um, Border Patrol and Customs in Toronto, I was just like talking with one of the airport employees because he was really interested that I was an engineering major. So I just really hope that people really talk about how like airport employees and other like essential workers were really making sure that society continued as the pandemic was becoming a pandemic. So overall, I just had a lot of emotions about this experience. There was the stress of them like trying to get home, which kind of turned into frustration at a point because I was thinking about why is this happening to me? Like why is it like this semester, like of all like years, that a like global pandemic was happening. But then that turned into relief when I was finally on my way home from Toronto. And then when I saw my parents in the airport, it just so like felt like such a weight came off me. So there was just a lot happening with trying to get home. So since I got home about a year ago, I was thinking a lot about how this study abroad experience really changed me. And one of the big things that I realized was that I have a very Americentric perspective on things. Like while I was abroad, I was very aware that I'm American and I never really had that awareness before. And it kind of made me realize that I kind of do fit into that like ignorant American stereotype because my Canadian friends were so much more just informed about world events and politics that I really wasn't informed about unless they like directly involve the United States. So it just made me realize that I do have an American perspective on things that a lot of people don't have and I need to be aware of that. Um, I realized that I have a lot more confidence in making and maintaining friendships because several of my friends that I made while I was abroad, I do still keep in touch with which is amazing because um, some of them have said, hey, when all of the, like everything with the pandemic is over, you should like come up to Queens University for a day, like for a weekend, which hopefully I can do maybe next year because hopefully we'll all be vaccinated by that point. Um, I learned a lot about um, the importance of living in the moment and not really needing to plan every last detail of something because um, like of course some structure is important like when you're planning a trip you need to know when you need to leave to um, make your flights you need to like schedule um, these flights and like um, make appointments for like, your airbnbs but you don't need to worry about planning like everything down to the minute and like trying to um, explore every little thing and do everything when you're in a city because a lot of times when me and my friends were just exploring 
we found some really cool like buildings and monuments that we got pictures with so that like very intense structure just puts a lot more pressure on you and that pressure can really like dampen the experience um i learned a lot about um, the importance of taking advantage of opportunities as they come to you i don't think it's going to be as intense as not being able to go abroad due to a pandemic but I learned that when these opportunities are presented to you, take them because you never know how long they'll be available to you. And finally, I just have a new appreciation for different cultures. You know, America isn't the whole world and people in different countries do things differently, but that's not a bad thing. And I think that a lot of Americans can learn a lot more just by broadening their horizons a bit and looking at how other people look at like history and politics and just how they go about their days. So any questions? Thank you so much, Elizabeth, for this exceptional sharing of your experiences and uh, all the uh, new uh, things that you have learned during your study abroad experience, uh, uh, even though it has it had to be cut short due to the pandemic. So we really appreciate all the insights that you shared. And here at the Etown uh, College, especially at the honors program, we really encourage our students to study abroad. And uh, as a result of studying abroad for one semester, you will have a chance to uh, receive um, uh, four credits uh, waived uh, for honors curriculum. And if you even study for one year, you will have a chance to uh, have a waiver of eight honors credits. So we really emphasize the importance of international insights and international engagement uh, through study abroad and other opportunities here at the college as well as at the honors program. And uh, I would like to give the floor to Megan Bell uh, for her to introduce herself and also talk about the opportunities that are available uh, through study abroad office. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, it was great to hear your presentation, Elizabeth. It's always exciting to hear about students uh, study abroad experiences. But um, as mentioned, my name is Megan Bell. I am a study abroad advisor for the college. So I do work with students to prepare for their for their study abroad experience um, and then follow up questions afterwards kind of with you throughout the whole process. Um, but we have a variety of study abroad programs. We have 60 plus different programs available for semester locations and kind of unlimited options really for summer programs. So there's really, you know, any length of time, semester, summer, winter break, spring break, if this is something you're interested in, we can definitely find a time and a program that fits with your academic, personal, extracurricular, athletic schedule, all of that. So if you're interested, definitely feel free to reach out to me um, and, and learn more from the study abroad office. Uh, and then I know that my colleague, um, Professor John Paul Benowitz couldn't be here this evening, but he uh, represents prestigious scholarships and fellowships at E-Town. Uh, and study abroad is a really great kind of launching off point to pursue those uh, prestigious opportunities post-graduation, um, such as the, the Fulbright Scholarship or maybe getting into the Peace Corps. Um, so by studying abroad, you're definitely helping out your application for those opportunities. Um, and just in general, study abroad, is, it looks really great on your resume as you're applying for graduate schools and jobs, because at this point, less than 10% of US undergraduate students actually study abroad. Um, so by saying, I know it's kind of surprising. So by saying that you are willing to, to take this new experience, to put yourself outside your comfort uh, zone, you're willing to work with people that are different than you, you're empathetic, um, you have an understanding of different cultures. There's so many different skills that you learn both academically and, and personally that you can take with you um, into your future plan. So um, just wanted to mention that a little bit, but thanks again for being here. And thanks, Elizabeth, I really appreciate your presentation. Thank you, Megan, and thank you, Elizabeth, for this wonderful session. I'm sure that it inspired many of our, many more of our students at E-Town to uh, go ahead and pursue study abroad opportunities. Thank you all for your time. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. I, I